Hey guys, it's Blake from Lighting for Worship, I mean, B Electronics. And this is the first lighting tutorial I'm going to do for the Hog 4. Now, if you don't care about learning about the Hog 4, then you can skip to this timecode to just skip all the tutorial. But if not, keep watching and I'll show you exactly how I program this song. Now, if you're interested in more lighting videos and more tutorials, definitely go check out Lighting for Worship. It's got a ton of great videos that you can check out. They're a little older, so that's why I'm doing this video. Now, because I volunteer in the children's ministry, I have been asked to be the lighting operator for the upcoming Vacation Bible School. There are two songs that we're doing that are from the artist Planet Shakers, which I personally really enjoy listening to their music. The first song I made a video, not really a tutorial, just a video, busking for This Is Our Time by Planet Shakers last year for VBS. This time I'm doing sort of a hybrid busking slash cueless based programming run, I guess. Now, I like busking in the way that it's very flexible with the various types of songs that you might need to do, but can't really do some of the things that I'm doing in this cue list. Can't really do that on busking unless you're a really good programmer, which I'm not the greatest, but I do know quite a bit about programming with the cue lists. But for now, I'm just recording an external screen and I'll just put whatever elements I tend to use up on that screen so that'll be recorded. So this is just the look I have up right now. This will be, you know, during talking or whatever, and I'll bring up my HTPs if I need to, downstage, downstage fill, bring those up when I need to. Keep house down for now. Facilities will yell at me. And so when I want to run a cue list, let's say I want to turn it up because that's the one that I'm going to be demonstrating. Put that on fader 10 up here. Okay, so the first cue, I just start out with a simple purple. Nice deep purple there. So that starts out the song. Okay, and for the intro, I bring in the R1s, make them yellow, and verse, bring those down. Take four seconds. For the chorus, I wanted a lot of movement, a lot of motion, a lot of intensity. So what I came up with is to use the pixel mapping abilities of the R2s to create a macro. So each R2 has randomized colors. Some of them are purple, some of them are yellow. And so that gives a sense of randomness, even though all it really is is just the macros cycling between various random purple and yellow cells. And what I've discovered with macros on the R2 is that they need to have a fade time of zero, but the rest of the stuff still has to have a fade time of two or whatever it is. I still want some fade time, but I don't want the fade time for the macro because then it'll it'll flip through a bunch of other macros while the channel is going up. And so I go to the R2s in the Q editor and set all these to zero so that the macro just snaps on while everything else will fade. Go to back to the verse, macros end, once again, this macro has a fade time of zero, and everything else has fade time of two. And since I didn't want the randomized cells, the yellow and purple cells, to show up, I also made that a fade time of zero, so that the colors will just snap in. Chorus, I literally just copied the cue, so it's the exact same look for the other chorus. And then we have an instrumental, which I bring in another intensity effect. It's just going around each fixture. I think for this, I had to use buddying so that each column of five will turn off at the same time. I think that has been corrected in future versions of Hog 4, but this is running a very old version since we have a lot of legacy stuff we still need to use. After that instrumental, go into a bridge. So we have zero second fade time on the macro and a two second on the color. We just have a simple intensity effect going across just the upstage R2s. And my trick for displaying white on Hog 4 is to, instead of going in intensity and just turning up the white intensity here, that's not really what you want to do. Because then you wouldn't be able to use this intensity, it'll, it'll just knock it out. So what you have to do is go to color, set cyan to 100, magenta to 100, yellow to 100, and white to 100. That way, if this is at zero, you're just projecting black. So I set white to 100, and 
I can still run normal intensity effects and everything, it's just like another color. And break down, zoom everything way out, bring in the blinders. I keep the intensity effect going on the upstage ones. I zoom everything out to 100%. And chorus, it's again zero second macro fade time. Blinders go off. The R1s, I have them on alternating color. So some of them are purple, some of them are yellow. And then I have an intensity effect going over that, that I've had in the previous courses. And the R2s, I added some white in there. Now because of that cyan magenta yellow trick, the white cells are actually colored black in these plots. So some of them have yellow, purple, purple, white. The macro is covering up a lot of the cell coloring, if you would. Now I've just got a simple pan position effect, and then after that, we end. So again, macro has a fade time of zero, color has a fade time of zero, everything else has a fade time of six seconds. Since this is kind of a hybrid busking slash cue list thing, I'm going to set my cue list to release on other go. That way when I hit my cyan master fader, it will release, turn it up, and bring it back to cyan. And in case I still want the house LEDs on, say I go back to turn it up, play that, still going, this one's releasing because it has a fade time of six seconds. It takes six seconds to fade everything. If I want house lights to stay on, I bring up my house HTP, hit cyan, and house lights stay on. Three weeks later. Praise goes home.